Hey, what is going on everybody? East Tactics here and it is finally time. I'm going to be installing the M2C shot caps. As you guys know from previous videos, I've talked a little bit about it. These shock caps are extremely cool. They are an emulsion style shock cap setup, basically getting rid of the bladder inside of the stock shocks and going with some extremely unique um, and uh, cleverly invented shock pistons. So if you look really close, you can kind of see there's an indentation along the, the sides of the shock piston. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing an O-ring around that thing. And if you look at the whole design, you can kind of see the difference between that top piston and the one right below it. You notice the top piston is showing the bottom of the piston and you can see some, some unique kind of uh, elongated shape oval holes. Those holes actually do not come through the top of the piston, as you can see on that one right below it. Instead, they start from the bottom and then they come out the side and what's interesting is with these O-rings put around that indentation there, the rebound on the shocks is reduced because the way the fluid pushes up through those holes right there, um, they're from the bottom, and then it basically forces the O-ring out while your shocks are doing the rebound motion. And it kind of squeezes the walls of the, uh, the chamber you know, from, from the inside, and it slows down the, the ability for it to, to rebound. So it goes down at normal speed, but rebounds slower because of the way the oil pushing through the shock piston. So pretty awesome. And I'm kind of excited about what it might do, especially when it comes to the dual shock spring experiment that I've been doing. As you guys know, I've been kind of doing some, uh, just experimenting with shocks because you know, I mean, obviously the stock shocks are set up, the, you know, perfectly from factory to, to be the ideal setup when it comes to performance and all those different things. However, I just want to try something new, turn my vehicle into an extreme basher. And I wanted it to basically just be tuned for mitigating the, the impact from large jumps, especially at like skate parks or like large, large jumps at like really hard dirt BMX parks and things like that. And I found originally by throwing two shock springs on each of my shocks that I drastically stiffened up um, my shocks and I made it to where I could drop my vehicle from a much higher height like uh, than stock and not have the chassis slap and hit the ground. Which again, when you're on concrete, you know, that slap, while it's normal to have a chassis slap, it also, you know, it's quick to damage your electronics. I've broken a number of fans simply because of that hard smack on the ground. I've also broken my servo from the same thing. I think the, the large smacks from like skate parks broke my, my actual Savox servo. So to me, I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and just throw some extra stiff shocks on this thing. And my first idea was just going with these dual shocks. Well, I had, a, I had one of my subscribers tell me about um, the Nero shock springs from the Big Rock. And these shock springs are insane. I mean, they are thick as all get out. And in actuality, one spring is the equivalent of having two shock springs. And so, um, you know, as time permitted, I was just able to throw the throw the Nero shock springs on the front just to kind of see how they felt. And I have yet to add them to the rear, but I'm going to. So just again, you can see kind of like the difference in thickness between the Nero shock springs and your stock shock springs. So, and just so you guys know, if you ever are interested in buying the Techno Orange shock springs, they actually are not any more um, like, you know, thicker or stiffer or anything like that. Even if you get the thickest ones, then the stock springs that come on your vehicle. So the, the specs are very similar to the ones that just come stock. So anyway, today, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pulling off all of the four shocks and we're gonna be adding the, um, the new shock caps. And then I actually, in my previous video, I kinda of was just doing a little, a quick drop test when we were at the park with my family. And I was showing you 
that, you know, obviously one of the side effects of having such stiff springs is there's a little bit of more bounce that happens with the vehicle in two arenas. In the first arena, it's like when you're running on flat grass, things like that, you get a little bit more bounce in the front end and it also takes a little bit away from your steering because the, the front end is not getting enough, you know, grip on the ground. And also just like s typical like drops, it doesn't have as quite as much um, absorption because the, st the stocks are pretty stiff. So there's a chance and I'm hoping that after installing these uh, shot caps that my rebound from dropping it from like, you know, 25, 30 inches up will, I mean, obviously I'm hoping it will go away completely, but at least make it better. And then after that, I'm gonna have to make a decision. Do I wanna stick with having these extremely stiff shocks and literally stick with it, and that's just the way I prefer to bash, or, you know, drop back to the stocks, the stock shock springs and, and just, you know, enjoy the, the M2C shock caps with regular shocks. So we'll see um, what happens, that's the idea. So let's go ahead now and see how quickly I can just get these shocks off and then we'll kind of take a real close look at seeing how to actually install these shock springs the proper way. And then when I'm all done, we'll kind of see how she uh, performs with a drop test. All right, so now it's time to work on the shocks themselves. And believe it or not, when you've got these shock springs on, these uh, these big rock shocks, they are very difficult to, to manhandle, to kind of pull down with your fingers to get this thing off. And so I actually created a little tool to do it. This right here is actually a huge metal washer and pretty thick. I um, took a hacksaw and I basically cut into it so that I can actually use this. And what you do is you basically push it down like this, and then you can get the full grip on this bad boy. And it allows you to get this sucker off. So. There we go. Just to give you guys a quick recap on what I've done on the insides of the shocks is right now I'm actually running, and this has been like an experiment over time, but I'm actually running 5,000 CST diff fluid in these shocks to sort of tame those Nero shock springs or the dual shock springs. Um, so, 5,000 weight is actually where I feel like um, I'm gonna stick with. And we're gonna see how these M2C shock caps with 5,000 weight, um, you know, ultimately impact the rebound on Nero shock springs all around. So now we've got everything set up to get this put together. First and foremost, I just want to go over the parts that you are going to be looking at to get this installed. So M2C provides a little O-ring that again goes in between here. There's two things I want to point out that are really important. One is that if you're watching Rich Duperbash's video on installing these, um, he does clearly tell us that the 1.5 go in the back and the one three go in the front. However, the one five in his video are the white Del Ren pistons and the one three are the black. And so if you're just looking at color, you might install them backwards because you're, you're just going by the color. So my package arrived and the one five piston, the one that's for the back is actually black and the 1-3 piston, which is white, is actually for the front, opposite 
of Rich Duper Bash's installation video. So that's the first thing to know. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go in and take a really close look at these and grab like a little pin and just kind of investigate each one of these holes individually. Because in a lot of these holes, you'll actually find a defect. See this little piece that's stuck in here right now? You wanna get all these out. I know it's kind of tedious, but you'll find that little flap on a lot of these holes. And then so what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually remove these. I mean, this may not be 100% like um, necessary, but in my opinion, those are just gonna kinda get in the way of that special attribute of these shocks. So do a close inspection on each one of the pistons. So what I would recommend you do is first and foremost, as soon as you open the package and pull all this stuff out, you should go through and inspect all four of the pistons, getting rid of these little defects, and then immediately after that, put the ring right here on all four pistons just to get it out of the way. Um, you're gonna save yourself a headache if you forget to put one of these on, you know, because you didn't do it in the beginning. Grab your O-ring, stick it around, And there you have it. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, this, uh, this issue people are, have been having with leaks with these shocks. And what I'm gonna say is I've heard a few people say that you really need to crank these things down to get them tight so that they don't leak. And that is probably a big reason why people are having leaks because they're cranking them down too tight. Let me explain. And it's very easy to make this mistake if, if you crank them down too tight. So I'm gonna remove this one. And if you're having leaks, this could be why. Take a look. See? Look what's happening. When you cinch this down too tight, what happens is it de-seats this rubber gasket from that shelf down there and just screws up. So if you don't have that thing seated, then you're gonna have leaks. So let me get this pulled out, dry it off. So you do not want to over tighten these with a fear of leaking because what you're going to inadvertently do is you're going to create the leak instead. If you look in here really close, you can see there's a shelf this sits on. So I'm going to push this in. The shelf itself doesn't have, it's like flush right here with the actual gasket, right? So it sits on this shelf and you just got to make sure that you do not over tighten these or else you'll have th this issue. All right guys, so let's officially do a start to finish on one of the shots so you can see exactly how to do it from start to finish. Now I think I left an in-text prompt to say go ahead and just throw all four of these into your caps, but actually what I wanted to show you guys really quick is something that I highly recommend you do. One of the things that you may run into, and so this is why I suggest doing this, is before you actually put the rubber gasket in there, go ahead and test the threads on all four of your shocks and make sure that the cap, when you're screwing it on, with this, again, this is without the, the that rubber gasket in there, that it threads on nicely and goes all the way to the bottom. With the, with the rubber gasket missing in there, it should just seat very easily it should be smooth threading the whole way now what might happen is when you get to about right here it might start feeling like it's getting tight at this point right here 
it happened on three of my four shocks, believe it or not. Um, there was only one of my shocks where the threads were 100% just smooth. Make sure that the caps that you're going to be assigning to that shock can thread down all the way and then back it off. That's important. Um, and don't let yourself get frustrated if, if uh, your threads are doing the same thing as mine. So long as it's threading nice and clean for the first five or six turns. And then when you get down to about that point, I'm saying it starts getting really hard. Then you know you've threaded it or started threading it correctly. And you just for whatever reason, you need to just get some more leverage on there and just get that all the way down. Okay. <clears throat> so that happened to me. And so once you've done that with all four of them, go ahead and stick this in all four of them so that you don't forget to put that in because the last thing that you want to do is have everything put back together and then you find one of these little gaskets sitting over here on the side and you're like, damn it. So put that in all four. We'll go ahead and set that aside. Now let's go ahead. Now this is completely an option. It's your choice. If you want to do a complete disassembly of your shocks, and um, just kind of do a tune-up. I'm gonna go ahead and do a complete disassembly of the shock so you can see I'm gonna do maintenance on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be re-gooping um, up the gaskets with this stuff right here. It's called green slime. This stuff is amazing. Cool. Go ahead and just get in there. When you start unscrewing it, that should come right out. We're gonna go ahead and just Pull the whole thing out, like so. Pop this off. I'm actually just gonna throw this away and I'll be putting on some of my do-it-yourself balloon shock boots. Now that the rod's pulled out, what you wanna do is you wanna do a close inspection on the rod itself and make sure that it's not bent if it is bent, then you know whatever measures you wanna to take to bend it back, I usually will stick mine in my vise that I've got up, up here and I'll uh, just tap it a few times with a hammer to get it straightened out. Um, but this one looks nice and straight, so we're good there. This right here should probably just come off by hand. We'll go ahead and unscrew it. Okay, now, Go ahead and remove that one, set it aside. Then there's this little plastic insert. Go ahead and remove that. Then there's another gasket. Oh, so my piston just kind of fell out, so there it is. All right, let's go ahead and set this gasket aside. This thing right here also has a little piece in it that you wanna just push down right here and it'll fall right out, right there. Okay, so that's basically the whole shock disassembled. First thing you do, grab your two little gaskets. Well, I call them gaskets, but they're O-rings. And stick them in a rag, get them nice and dry. All right, we're gonna set those back down here. Take this little piece, dry it. Doesn't matter which direction this piece goes in when you put it back in. Set that here. Then we're gonna grab this little piece. Dry it off. Now you do want to do you do want to do a close inspection on these. These do get damaged. You can see that defect at 12 o'clock right there. I'm gonna flip it around. Um, you do want you do want to pay close attention to these because if you actually bend one of your shock rods, a lot of times this thing will it'll ruin the hole on this. It'll make it oval shaped or whatever. And I noticed there's just a little burr in there that I want to just kind of get out. And actually, all it really was was dirt that got stuck in there. So, um, but if you do damage one of those typically from bending one of your shock shafts. And you're gonna to wanna to order another set of these. Unfortunately, they do not come with your Arma as far as backup parts. You've gotta order, um, basically here's the part number. 
I'll go ahead and put this part number in my master description in case you need it. But yeah, you'll have to order it if this thing is damaged in any way. So now that we've gotten that set aside, we're going to go ahead and get everything lubed up. So we'll start with the gaskets. Like I said, you can't use too much of this green slime. It's amazing. What I like to do is I'll just take the bigger, the bigger side and just push it right there. Set it on top. And then I'll screw this on. Now, this thing right here, there should be no gap. That means that you know that it's properly found its seating right here. Now, I like to just leave my um, shock rod end on here, and I like to just go up through, through here. I don't really think it matters in my opinion either way, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this up through now. And this is just light, it's not tightened all the way. Sometimes you just gotta twist it a bit. There you go, just popped in. We're gonna go ahead and remove this washer, set it aside. So it's okay that this, this little um, washer is got, it's kind of sticky. Cause what we wanna do, is we wanna take our piston and we want these oval holes to be facing down. And just a quick reminder again, that the one five piston is the piston that goes in the back. In, in this case, it's the black one. Now in Rich Duper Bash's video, the one five pistons were actually white and the one threes were black. So just make sure that the one five, which is actually, if you look really close, slightly larger holes than the front goes in the back. Now, you want, when it comes to which direction you want these to face, you want to actually put this, this washer on this side where you see the engraved 1.5 because you want the special inlet holes to be facing down. So we're going to go ahead and just stick that there and because it's got a little bit of fluid on it, it's going to stick for me. Then, basically, you just turn it sideways push it on, take your, I don't know, whatever tool you want and just kind of tap it in. Doesn't have to be like insane tight, just basically hand tight. Okay, so the piston is now in there. We want to tighten this down. So what I do is I take my nasty pliers and I add more damage to the top of my shocks. <laughs> Definitely need to get me some nice shock pliers. And another set of pliers here. And just give that, I mean, like you don't, this does not have to be insanely tight either, but I would say slightly tighter than hand tight because that's why I use the tools. All right, so make sure you got good range of motion here. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop the shock shaft all the way to the bottom, and then we're gonna fill it up. 
This is, again, because of the special experiment that I'm doing with my shock springs. This is insanely thick shock fluid for the Nero shocks springs, which are these crazy things. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up all the way. So it's basically level. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly bring up my piston all the way to the top. I'm gonna do that over here. You wanna go really slow so that you don't push any of the fluid and make it drip over the sides. So now that I've got it all the way up, I'm gonna just go the opposite direction and you'll notice that air bubbles will pop, will kind of come when you go back all the way down. So at this point, I'm just going to let it sit with it all the way open in a, basically, you know, if I want to set it in one of my shock springs or something. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I want that, we want that to sit for a good 10 or 15 minutes to let those air bubbles rise out. All right, so now that that's been sitting for about 10 minutes, you can look in there, you don't see any large air bubbles. Okay, so what you do, and again, the shaft is all the way down, okay? Now, what I've done as an extra measure to prevent leakages, because actually if you look closely, and here's a kind of blurry, zoomed in picture of Rich Duperbash's completed installation, you, you'll notice that there is a small gap between the top of the shock shaft and the anodized red and the silver. There's a gap there because that plastic, I mean the rubbery gasket, the big one that you put inside of the shock cap, prevents it from screwing all the way down. And if you do find that you've gone all the way down, then you probably pop that gasket out and you're gonna have leakages and you're not gonna have a properly functioning shock. So anyway, I have these these uh, DIY shock boot um, balloons. And what I, what I do is I take and cut off just this kind of fat portion right here. And then I have a special, I don't know, it's kind of like my own makeshift uh, o-ring if you will that I'm going to be putting around the top of the shock right here okay so now if you look at my other shocks you'll see it in there okay so just something I'm doing to kind of help mitigate some of the frustrations that people are having um, with leaking and also combined with knowing that if you over tighten it, that's probably a good probability as to why you're having those leaks and you've actually de-seated that, that rubbery gasket inside of the shot cap. So now we're going to take the, if you haven't done this already, you want to take the grub screw out of the shock Kind of just set that aside and we're going to take the shock shock shaft open we're going to screw this thing on make sure it feels like it's threading correctly from the get-go and then we're going to go all the way to the point where You can't do it yourself with your hand. And then when it's like hand tight, now we're gonna push the shock shaft all the way up. When it's all the way up, we're gonna put in our grub screw. Okay, now, now this is the important part. Take whatever leverage device you use 
put it in, grab the shock shaft down here below. Okay, so how tight can you make these before you actually start popping that gasket is the following. Rich Duper Bash suggests a quarter of a turn, which is gonna be here. I found that you can actually go about a full turn before that happens. And then you'll notice here that I've got my gasket down here. That is how tight, no tighter. And that pretty much sums it up. So basically, at this point, pump it a few times, and you're good to go. Basically, that completes the installation of these custom shock caps and pistons. Um, I've added a little modification with those balloons and putting this little rubber um, seal around the bottom. I will report to you guys how well that works. But I think the most important thing that people were having an issue with, especially because there are some people out there saying that you've really got to crank these things down to prevent them from linking, um, is that you're, they were just over tightening them too much. And that gasket inside just deceives itself. And the whole point of that rubber gasket in there is to prevent leaks. So. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put my shock boots on, which as many of you may or may not know, I, I do have another video on it, but I'll just show you real quick. I, I ordered these balloons right here, which are kind of like a, a little bit larger than normal size um, when it comes to like balloon, animal balloons. And I mean, you just basically open up your shock all the way and just kind of eyeball it. You know, there's nothing really complicated about it. Get your scissors. And, you know, there is like a little bit of a lip right here that this just kind of slides right, right over. And the nice thing about this slightly larger size balloon is it's easy to just to go over the top of your shock rod and basically pop that balloon over. It kind of seats itself in there. And then, so you just take one of these small rubber bands right here I like to put a little bit of a fold right there. Then I'll take my rubber band. And open it up all the way, give it a little bit of a twist. Basically that's just a kind of quick DIY shock boot. So I'll do that to all four of my shocks, reinstall everything, and then I will be back to uh, kind of do a, an up close uh, look at the aftermath and we'll we'll see if there's any difference see what happens I've got those new MTC shock caps installed I've got the Nero shock springs on both the rear end and on the front end. These Nero uh, Big Rock shock springs are really stiff. They are actually the equivalent of running the dual shock springs. So anyway, now that I have the M2C shock caps installed, check this out. See how slow she rises? Okay. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with that. One of the things that you want to do with these uh, shock springs or with the, the M2C caps, and this will happen naturally from just, you know, bashing, 
but you kind of want to prime these these shocks. All right, let's drop this from about 20 inches up. A lot less bounce, if I do say so myself. Okay, we're gonna go about 35 inches. And the more these shocks get kind of, I don't know, just like warmed up, the better they do. That was from about 35 inches. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually really impressed with the emulsion style M2C shock caps.